Okay. Hello. And Hi. Welcome to our long promised Q&A. Did you promise one? Yeah. Fine. A while ago. That's why people ask us questions. Oh, uh, right. Jeez. Yeah. So, thank... Good morning. <laughs> We're not quite awake yet. So, yeah, thank you very much for sending in the questions. It's, yeah, there have been quite a few and we didn't need to make up any, which we were... No, of, so. we always have a few questions ready in case it's going to be a total humiliation when we ask for it, but lots of you are very kind to send a bunch of questions our way. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we start with the most important topic, which, which is, is Kai. Kai. So, A, does he get seasick? No, he does not. No. Mm. Never, I think. We get seasick. I will sometimes, often, sometimes be lying here being feeling, feeling very bad. And Kai will come and hit me in the face with a toy because he wants to play. Oh. So, definitely not or he seasick. Or will, he will walk over you and look out of the window. This is very annoying because he steps on <laughs> my tummy and I'm trying not to. <clears throat> That's not yeah. helpful. Anyway, so, and how does he do his business on deck? I think we've, we could get into more, like, about, it, he's like, always been, okay, so, <laughs> very quickly, Kai's yeah. always been living on the boat, we trained him, we were lots of things that didn't work out, um, but eventually we managed to crack the code with him, and he, does pee pee and poo poo on the deck no problem a little bit too much sometimes yeah he, he get, will pee on the deck when we come back for a walk it's like dude just went for a walk yeah he gets so. uh, he gets reinforced positively so he gets a treat whenever he yeah. only when we on passage though yeah and yeah it, it took a while but and it involves uh, pushing him obviously or pushing any dog because they they will they or even if you have them from young, uh, if you're not on the boat for a couple of weeks, then he will naturally not want to do it on the boat. Uh, so, yeah, one suggestion is also keep it up, even if you only do mm. once per year passage. Uh, sometimes just don't take him to shore and let him do it on deck, even though it's counterintuitive, but it will help him stay uh, confident. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about that for a long yeah. time. Yeah. I would just say the only thing is, Really, when they do do, uh, when they do do, when they do do, <laughs> they do, do, do then really make it uh, a party, celebrate it, make them feel like it's more than okay because they will feel probably the first time your dog will go, it's because they really can't hold it anymore. They think that they're doing something bad, and you really have to just communicate to them that no, this is actually what we want you to do. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then anyway, and then the other question that we got a lot recently that nobody's asked before. No. But now we've got a few of them. You want to take this one? Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> does Kai have a girlfriend or is he still dating? He. But he's he, a true sailor who has a girl in every port. Or a boy. We don't know. Yeah, I mean he's. He's very open. We think he might be gay. Like he loves playing with the girls, but. He falls in love with the boys. He falls in love with the boys. Which is okay. So it's actually great. He's not fixed, so that's one problem done. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to worry about... He doesn't know how it works. Most dogs are bigger anyway. He or goes for the wrong end. He goes for a leg. Yeah. It's just... But he does occasionally fall Head over love. heels with yeah. a male dog. Sometimes so. a female, but mostly male. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's still dating. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he seems quite happy. Yeah, yeah, he always. There are lots of boat dogs around at the moment here. Huge so we amount, actually yeah. always been able to find a friend or two for him. Mm -hmm. So it's great. So yeah. So that's with Kai. That's Kai. If you have more questions about Kai, just in the comment section. Yeah. So now to the boring. Boring. Cold, hard, facts, part. I mean, facts. Uh, but we got a lot of questions, so yeah. Yeah, I think it's yeah also the People most know. <laughs> stressful uh, finance. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how do you finance your journey? And yeah, yeah, how do you finance your journey? 
Yeah. Uh, should I? So, uh, we sort of have financed our journey in advance and uh, we, we, we suffered, <laughs> in a way not really, but uh, we saved up a lot of money while living on the boat in Denmark, so we saved up rent. Uh, it was not easy living on a, a small, relatively small boat through the winter, but we managed. Three we Danish winters. Three Danish winters. And, and the last one, everything froze over. Yeah, the boat so that was, was rock solid. Then we were over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we then we also did like the sailing vacations, uh, and we sort of minimized spending money, uh, to be honest. There was also COVID, so that helped a lot. Uh, yeah, and that gave us a nice buffer. That uh, helped a lot. Yeah. That's right. It's just, there's nothing to spend money on during a pandemic. Yeah. Not uh, for us, at least. So, that was... Yeah. And and that helped. I mean, since then we have... Stop saying that. And that helped. <laughs> uh, Everything <since> has the <laughs> silver linings. Yeah. Since then, uh, we haven't really earned any money. I mean, some odd jobs here and there. When we were in Greece during the two winters, we we weren't lazy, but we helped sort of my dad build and renovate a whole house. We renovated a house so in exchange we got rent for free and a free mooring buoy which really helped us yeah. keep our costs down. It's like two off seasons on a free mooring buoy. Yeah, so we didn't have any winter storage and mm. so on. So I think our motto is uh, saving money being cheap or uh, being cheap and on the right things. We don't want to compromise either the boat safety or uh, you know, but this also reflects on what we uh, spend on the boat, or what we have spent. Or is that another topic? I don't know. It's a bit complicated. But anyway, yeah, we we, we <laughs> I don't know where you're going. Me neither. Next question. Yeah. We we'll see if we get back to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we love your channel. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what are your typical monthly expenses, and how do you handle? German healthcare, uh, yeah. So quickly, we don't handle German healthcare because I'm not. I'm a citizen of Germany, but I'm not a resident. No. So I don't really have to do anything with Germany. And, and I'm a Danish citizen, so. Yeah. So we. It's pretty good to be Danish citizen in this case. I think. Yeah, it's so pretty good to be being yeah. European citizen in Europe. You you sort of get covered a little bit by the yeah. European health. Uh, European health card or health system. Yeah, but still Danish is... Uh, knock on wood, we stay strong and never test it out. Uh, typical monthly expenses is something we don't really know and we don't really want to know. Uh, no, we like, you know, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. And we live in constant uh, denial. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we, as we said, we try to keep it really low. Uh, uh, one thing maybe that goes also how we finance or how we prepared for this voyage, which uh, and keeps our monthly or helps keep our monthly expenses low is that before we went on the journey we lived on the boat and we invested a lot in the boat while we were living on the boat to get to know it, installed everything ourselves, uh, renewed the rigging, got a new mainsail, got a new autopilot, uh, installed AIS. So we installed all of that and spent all of that money beforehand in the hope that we will go quite a while maintenance free. Uh, it also helped uh, m doing all of that before we leave, before we left, because we could get some really good offers just by uh, looking online like every month without being stressed to as to when to get it. And then we actually saved a lot on the autopilot. Yeah, and then when you live on a boat in a harbor for three years, you also get to know people and sometimes that helps a little bit. You might get a little bit of discount here, discount there, or, yeah, you, you or just get a contact like this guy is good. And yeah, yeah so bought some used, like a uh, used uh, second anchor and so on. Mm. And uh, and then after we left, we, we really try not to spend a lot. Like if something breaks, if it's not essential. <laughs> we just throw it overboard. <laughs> we, we give it away. <laughs> Like our bow thruster, we gave it away, we laminated it through, bow yeah. thruster, uh, like now some like now foot pump break. Our toilet, uh, 
the vacuum toilet broke we, we rather opted for a new brand new toilet that is much cheaper like a Yapsco manual one and we do things like that we try to we, we sourced a lot of spare parts in Greece from my dad and friends who are sailors uh, we made a lot of teak plugs we, we we got some work done from my dad's teak work mm. and we got it the only thing we really bought since we left was a new chain anchor chain quite cheap in Greece very good still mm. what else do we buy? new solar panel? one new solar panel which we then also installed sort of completely for free we borrowed tools we borrowed some material or we, we had some materials lying around so mm -hmm. saving cost is yeah and and avoiding expenses that are maybe unnecessary like when our oil cooler broke we just bypassed it and it still works otherwise we would be a thousand euros in yeah it's yeah it's a simple life we make do and we just you know it is nice to have all these fancy you just press the button and then everything yeah, works for you whatever but it's just it's just more stuff that will break yeah. so we're just going more and more manual yeah manual and, and 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 things like whatever. like other sailors like my dad luckily has he's he has gathered a lot of stuff he has friends so you ask around and oh here's like a winch we don't need oh cool we need it like mm -hmm. some shackles some spanners we did the new lifelines around the boat or the railing with Dyneema which was quite fun to do and very cheap so cheap solutions you can find saving money uh, and to end this question because it goes forever uh, yeah, we can talk about this for a long <laughs> time yeah uh, I think so if you have any specific questions we can do a whole Q&A on this yeah so I think <laughs> like if we put a price on it I think both both of us including the dog and the boat and boat insurances I think we, we spend around thousand euros per month for all of that mm -hmm. sometimes more sometimes probably way less like winter month if the boat is just hanging on the mooring for a few months and nothing breaks yeah. but again as we said now we are in the third year so the things we have installed uh, or thought they were good some of them might start breaking so it actually now that we have less money the expenses might rise so we always say go for maximum two years at a time yeah, because in the third year everything starts breaking. Yeah, the subs, everything. Okay, so I hope uh, that covered it. Yeah. Next question. Money is a problem for all of us. Uh, are you able to earn money working remotely and uh, so stay aboard uh, Dory Man for longer? Uh, I mean, money is a problem. It's a bit related to to the next questions, like can we work in in the off season yeah and we hope we can do some work in the off season and yep yeah, in the off saving season and then save up some more money so we can go but what we have in our experience it's not really possible to 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 really handle a job and sail as much as we are at the same time yeah it, I can't imagine doing it. It's just too difficult. Uh, or some people have to miss and stuff like Starlink, and then it won't, probably won't really pay off. <laughs> it's very expensive, and it would definitely also prevent us from from sailing. Like we have friends who have very nice jobs where, for instance, they only need to work like three hours a day or something, but they also say it. Even though it's only three hours, it ends up mean they don't go as far as they might want to yeah. and stuff. So it's. Yeah, there's a payoff there. There's, I think if we would get the chance then we would consider changing the lifestyle and saying like we're gonna you know go sailing only on our vacations again but meantime live on the boat in nice mm -hmm. places but we wouldn't be able to do like three four thousand miles in the season to get yeah. because it's simply and it's also Unless you have a really good job, uh, having Starlink and so on and everything, and maybe needing more power on the boat would also mm. be a huge expense. So, so yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now and what we want to do next year. We will get back to that if we also had to have work commitments at the same time. But we hope that this year in the off season we we can do some small jobs. Yeah. And if you have any ideas of what we could do, <laughs> or do you, you need any translation? Do you need any 
Um, technical, no? Yeah. Technical. Weather boat, routing. Weather routing. <laughs> sustainability. There's a genius guideline. here. Sustainability. Anything? Yeah, let us know. Let us know. You know. Or handiwork. We are Renaissance people. We can yeah. do everything. Yeah, and nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So. Next yeah. chapter. Next chapter. So no. Next topic: the boat. The boat. The dory man. Oh, is it your whip? Yeah. Or <laughs> as somebody else called it now, dory ma. Like in ma. I just think in the marina. A typo? Yeah, but still, it was an interesting name, dory ma. Dory ma. Yeah. Maybe that's what they meant originally when they named the boat. Anyway. <laughs> uh, great boat. Uh, thank how, you. How did you? Yeah, thank you. How did you two decide on the HR three five two? Did you view a lot of boats? And over to Leo's life story. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the initial uh, decision was probably by me and my dad. Uh, I didn't view a lot of boats. I view in my life two boats, and I bought both. The first one was the Steel Catch in Denmark, just to live aboard. It was actually really good, very cheap. But the interior was, it was sort of, the interior was designed by some random people who built it themselves, so it was terrible, so uh, unless we would have torn it all out and we did it, every, we did everything, uh, yeah, it was not livable really or not practical. And I didn't really like steel boats uh, because I, I'm not really good in welding, so. So, as I was living on the steel boat, my no dad, comments to yeah, that one. as I was living uh, on the steel boat, my dad uh, happened to visit for a few times, and I was imaginary boat shopping. And then there was it's always imaginary boat shopping. Yeah, like most people. And then, <laughs> I sort of for fun, I, I saw this this boat actually, and I was like, oh, this is just an hour away. What do you think, Dad? And he was like, oh, I see it's a good boat, and a nice size. Uh, still, for my taste, quite expensive. Uh, but I thought, okay, since my dad is there, he's really knowledgeable. <laughs> uh, I took him on the train, we went one hour, we, we saw it. It was a lovely couple, older couple that had it, and it looked really good. Uh, everything. They had taken good care of it, even yeah. though it was an old boat. The interior yeah. appeared very practical, like it had a heating, everything. Uh, yeah, and then a week later, my dad had left, but then we went together. Mm. and. You really liked it too. You approved it, and then we actually we didn't even had a survey or anything. Uh, we just. Uh, I just want to say here before anybody says like attacks me for not being super involved in the whole thing. Leo and I hadn't been together for that long when he got this boat. No. So I sort of bought into the boat later on. This was initially your thing. Yeah. Just want to say that. That's okay. Yeah. No, because <laughs> otherwise people are gonna be like, no, you as a war machine. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we made an offer, we had some negotiations and the boat ended up coming into the harbor and when we had, I had two boats for a week. Mm -hmm. Then the idea was that maybe my dad will sail the other one with some friends to Norway, but in the end we put it on the market for f sort of to see what will happen and it sold also within a week, so that was a relief. and. And then we had Dory Man, and we are super, super happy with her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the price was really good. There were a few things, obviously, like every older boat, like the teak deck is an ongoing maintenance, but it's very thick. Uh, we had to renew the rigging. The sails weren't really, really good. Uh, yeah, but overall, she has given us minimal problems and very nice sailing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, next one. Uh, does the boat need any big items of work to stay seaworthy? Knock on wood. What do you want to? Well, there is always the engine. There is always the engine, but the engine. It's been our wild card all along because yeah. it's the original Volvo Penta. Two thousand and three turbo without an oil cooler. <laughs> exactly, and uh, yeah. But I mean, the engine doesn't really make the boat seaworthy in a way. Uh, no, but it's a huge. If it breaks down, it's yeah. It might not be money we will be able to. 
that might be the end of the adventure, to be honest. Yeah, we will, we will manage somehow. But otherwise, we okay, had the boat. Good to know. <laughs> I mean, we had the rigging renewed in 2021. Uh, the sails, we have two sails of each. Three, I mean, we have a storm jib, an extra bigger Genoa, the Genoa, an old mainsail, a storm mainsail. So, yeah, that uh, was um, because we like it's a sailboat, we're yeah. going sailing, so it was more important for us to make sure we had good sails and we had backup sails. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we had the boat out this this winter, and we did we replaced all the through holes with uh, composite ones. We did the cutlass bearing the the new propeller, um, a new old propeller. Uh, uh, we copper coated the boat. Uh, we laminated over the bow thruster so there won't be any leaks there. Uh, yeah, we. The rudder looked very good. The everything. Yeah, I mean there can always be something, but knock on wood, maybe not. And we're keeping a close eye on the engine. Yeah. Uh, we kiss it every morning. Say a little prayer. So Not religious, but still, yeah. it's good to have all your bases covered. <laughs> yeah, and then mm. we're going to the next question a little bit. Uh, I'm then just going to it. Do you have future plans of giving Doriman some electric propulsion? Mm -hmm. We always dream about that. We always have. It was sort of from the beginning the plan because we always knew the engine was. Before we even left, we talked about this. Yeah, but we realized that. <laughs> We didn't. We needed the right, the time when we left was the right time for us to go. And if we wanted to do the electric thing, we would have need to Stay. lay at least two years. And you know how it is. And you delay for that. You delay for this. And then you end up never going. So, yeah. so yeah. we short story. We are always I think twenty twenty to thirty thousand euros short of putting an electric engine. Well, increasingly more so because there's no money coming in, babe. True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we also came, we, we had some ideas of maybe doing a DIY and, you know, sourcing some batteries for, uh, and so doing something like Uma did, like sourcing a cheap engine. But uh, although it somehow worked for them, it also didn't work because I think the latest video, they're changing again all the electric system, they're changing again the batteries. And they probably can afford it. Uh, we can't can't even afford it once <laughs> and also we we conclude that as long as this engine works without us investing a lot of money in it which we haven't I mean I don't count really changing the oil uh, or changing an oil filter or maybe an impeller which we still have some spares we never use so uh, if it breaks then certainly we will try our best to to get an electric in Yes. If we somehow can do it, and we will, or and somehow wing it. Yeah. We also think it would be a cool experiment. Like we know that there are other halberg that are actually gone electric, um, but as far as we know, none of them are sailing Too or much. going long distance necessarily. Yeah. So we just think it could be kind of cool to show that you can actually have an electric yeah. engine on a boat like this, and how that would work. Yeah. So, so we. Yeah. yeah. We also. We'll in the next time try to contact some of the new new brands and manufacturers. Yeah, we'll we'll see like uh, we'll see when the uh, one breaks down. Yeah, but it's also just to start a discussion and maybe mm. some of the brands. Uh, if you know anybody. Yeah, <laughs> things that that they can give us a very cool offer or yeah. collaboration. We're <laughs> just continue working on it. It is also from and I don't want to get into discussion because there's so much misinformation and data lacking and whatever. But for us, it's also about we want to go electric, not because for environmental reasons. So we don't think necessarily it makes sense if we do it and we go with batteries that are not really up to the task and we will have to exchange them all the yeah, time because yeah. batteries are really bad so ideally we would go straight for some really good batteries that can last for a longer period of time because then it would but environmentally it, it, definitely make sense yeah but it also makes sense and mm. and if you want to promote expensive. yeah but also That's if you want to promote something and and we could do an honest review of how it affected our cruising hopefully uh, I mean, sailing is still the best, obviously, but uh, there need to be 
soon a very good alternative to burning diesel. I mean, it's the maintenance, everything is bad, but also the environmental impact. So if 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 just to say, like you and your friend, who is actually knows a lot about this stuff, you made some calculations, and basically we could get with the right gear, we could get this boat up, and so it could do two to three hours at the time yeah, on motor or something like that, which would be more than enough of what we need to get in and out of harbors or anchorages or maybe get us out of that windless hole or whatever yeah. it is anyway, in most cases yeah. anyway we'll talk about this one for a really long time but yeah we would love to uh, yeah okay and then we go into the la how is your upgraded solar arc and solar panels performing uh, how is the electrical usage and our batteries and is there anything we would do differently uh, we are really happy with everything we did this year uh, doubling our solars from 190 to 380 yeah. but our batteries are now five, year old, five years old and they still perform like new uh, they're charged every morning we have not plugged in this year once we don't even know where the cable is our electric usage is also very low on the boat to be fair we don't have any high consumers like radar or a freezer or anything we only have a small inverter that charges our camera battery uh, laptops and you're so bossy about and electric so usage yeah, it's like a grandpa who grew up during wartime yeah. why is this lamp on why is this what are you doing we don't you can need have that. all the lamps on no charging in the night yeah why do you have the lights on when it's dark you can have them on all day. <laughs> <have> light on <laughs> no, but obviously, if you're a bit careful and you charge your laptops, you know, during the day and not as soon as the sun sets, like, oh, I'm going to charge my laptop, then you really train That's the. That's why they run out. Yeah, then you have to plan better. Uh, would we do anything? Bossy. Would we do anything different? I don't think we would because at the time we. Because we're perfect in every way. Every way. Yeah. At the time we put in the batteries, that was now nearly five years ago. Uh, I didn't really understand much about electricity and uh, or lithium batteries and they weren't still uh, that cheap. We could have done it but I didn't have the knowledge and it. I think it's if they last another two years getting seven years out of an AGM battery it's pretty fine for me. Mm -hmm. um, we could have designed the arc, our solar arc better but again, we didn't know what we really wanted. Uh, so now we know. Now, I, if I had the money, maybe I would uh, get a professional welder and bend something really nicely, one piece, and then our sort of uh, rotating or, or tiltable system. We are really happy. Stopped it down with Dyneema. Make it all a little bit neat. Not my ugly welding, uh, but that's all. Right? I'm not going to comment on the welding. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing I think uh, now it makes really sense to go with lithium batteries. If you put new batteries, perhaps invest a bit more, go with lithium. It opens a lot of more uh, yeah, that's, options. That's the only thing. We would love, for example, to have an induction cooker with a good inverter so we could... Because the gas is also just such a... Pain. Yeah, and it's bad as well yeah. for the environment. So if, mm. if we could at least do half our cooking during the day with uh, induction, that would be perfect. Mm. Then we could still have the gas sort of if we really need to cook something, or we need two or three cooktops. Anyway, next, you want to take that? Okay. I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to ask me the question? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to jump the pond? Which pond? The pond. The pond. The yeah. pond. Not yet. No. 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 We're saying that very solemnly. No. Like the no. Atlantic. So the Atlantic, we will not jump. It's, it's something we really want to do one day. But as you can hear, we're being very honest about money is an issue, and we just don't feel that it would be right for us to go right now because if we would just, it would be too much financial stress on us and. Once we cross the Atlantic, we're the kind of people who probably would end up wanting to keep going. And, you know, there's more and more and more. And then we probably end up selling our kidney or something. and that wouldn't I be don't healthy. think our kidneys are enough, babe. Um, no. Anyway, so it's something we want to do 
definitely one day. Um, but right now we yeah, we are a bit yeah. sad because everybody goes yeah, across and we were kind of yeah, of a crossing and community and we are all like, no, we're gonna stay. Yeah, yeah, and our friends, we made so many friends ever since going to the Canaries, and it's it's really lovely. Um, but 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 it it was just yeah, yeah. and we have but we have yes plans we have plans and we have great plans and we also have lots of other things we want to do and crossing the atlantic is for us not the be all end all no we have um, better plans maybe a little bit yeah because yeah. so far we really we we want to <laughs> spend the winter in the canaries and so far it's really nice really tranquilo tranquilo <laughs> no, <laughs> now I you know what that word means <laughs> yeah and that's good. Yeah, we don't want to. If we were crossing now, we would have to move on to Cap Verde, obviously. But then also the Which time. Which would also be nice. Yeah, but then you, you, I think each of these islands you can spend probably a whole season just to explore. But going to the next question, uh, what are your future cruising plans, if any? Uh, I know you tend to go with the wind. Yes, we we know that as well. But uh, if the wind and the boat and our health and whatever the boat uh, the engine will take us where we want to go for Poseidon willing well we in, we will stay here in the Canaries and explore and then in the spring we'll go to Madeira and we go to the Azores yeah or the Azores or however you want to pronounce that um, see some whales should be quite amazing it's like the Hawaii of the Atlantic yeah that sounds pretty good and where do we go from there? Because we do not want to go back to the Orcas. No. That's the one thing. Like now we have missed them twice, luckily. We can miss And I don't, I really don't feel like going about it no. a third time. Even if we're lucky, it's so stressful. So stressful. Yeah, and, and, and then uh. Uh, we came up with a brilliant idea. I came up with a brilliant idea. Yes. Of why don't we cross directly from the Azores to Ireland? They have good Guinness beer, so that's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be our, <laughs> it would be our longest crossing yet. It's it's about one thousand, one hundred nautical miles. Mm -hmm. Then we can become members of the Ocean Cruising Club as well. Yes, we have to go to a very specific part on the west coast of Ireland to make sure you you get over the. Thousand. No, no, I think it's mostly over a thousand. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and that way we stay. We hope to stay well, well west of the Orcas. Mm -hmm. uh, we avoid all the hassle, or we also avoid going into crossing again into Spain or wherever where we have been. And mm -hmm. yeah, so. And it's it, it's a journey that's a little bit outside of the ordinary. But that being said, we do yeah, have friends who've done yeah. it, so it is definitely possible. But it's less busy, and after another season in the med mm. and now here with all the people crossing and stuff we are really we really want to avoid the crowds so yeah and hopefully going that way we can have a little bit of that magic back again which we had in sweden when we were basically alone all the time and that puts us into northern europe where we yeah. then uh, have uh, a little bit of summer left and then we can a really grey and rainy and like a summer where you're wearing jumpers. Oh, I miss it. Where you discover all the leaks in the boat where it will rain in. We're really looking forward to rain and mud and stuff like that. Like mold the seasons. Mold in the cupboards <laughs> and you know. So and you guys can point to this video when we are complaining in a year from now about yeah. how hard it all it all is. Like this is what you wanted. Yeah, and then <laughs> And then spend another year uh, in the north on the boat. Hopefully, hold for waterfall. Yeah, hopefully being in the northern Europe, we have also a good chance to find a really good job for the winter. That will fill up our bank. We hope to swing it so we can stay stay living on board yeah. and work at the same time, like we did before. And uh, yeah. yeah, then it will be also time to reflect on what we really want to do after that. Because mm. we also 
I mean, this whole journey actually started with us really wanting to go to Norway and Scotland, but because of the pandemic, that didn't work out for us. So like, we still really have this craving. Yeah, the, the for going north. Oh, the, so, I mean the, the. But we don't know. Like that's way too much in the future to say. But yeah, the whole Baltic. Yeah, the Baltic, and then, but up the coast of Norway. But also Faroe I Islands, like Iceland. Yeah, that that could be something we end up doing. Yeah. Or maybe we are like, okay, we just needed a month of rain and cold, and now we're gonna go back. So. So we don't know, but that's our. Uh, yeah. Plans? Yeah. There's another question, but I think we answered yeah, which areas you want to visit. Are you going across the Atlantic? No. Caribbean? No. North America? We would love to one day, obviously. Actually, yeah, that's something like we have friends who have done it multiple times. They are Americans. Yeah. And we have friends who are probably going now. But like actually going over the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and then up along the, uh, the US coast, East yeah. Coast, should be really lovely as well. Yeah. That could actually be cool. Are you heading back to the Mediterranean next spring? Uh, never. No. Never. We Not will go back to Greece, but it will be by car and we will borrow your dad's boat when we are there. But yeah, we don't need sailing to through the Met. Greece is lovely. Love Greece. Sailing through the Met, such a pain in the you know but, what. Yeah. Yes. Never again. Yeah. Twice is enough. <laughs> okay. We're nearly through. Yeah. Hard question for the end. Mm -hmm. uh, are you guys gonna have babies? No. <laughs> <laughs> we have Kai. We get that a lot. But lots of people have done voluntary like uh, family yeah. planning on our behalf. So he's yeah. been in a pregnant. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, stay serious. There is one more question. Why are you doing this? I don't know. Just saying it out. Uh, what is your favorite place? Big announcement! Yeah, that would be a good You thing. have visited so far. I would just say it's really hard to put one place. Uh, right? Everything has, I mean. Everything every, has been. Yeah. About every country we've been to, there's definitely a place where we would go, oh, you have to yeah. go there. That's amazing. I would say, but we. I think. We love sailing around Sweden. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that was sort of the highlight and that might be biased. Highlight was the beginning. <laughs> yeah, because we were so excited, but we were also lucky. There was COVID. So we were alone. It was an amazing spring. It was, yeah. was wa warm. Yeah. And we were sort of alone in Sweden with nice temperatures, empty harbors. Yeah. It was only us and Ran sailing. We, we didn't really meet, but we saw in Stromstad. Because we were too shy. We were too shy to talk to them. Yeah. And it, it was pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, after that, you, 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 you. It becomes also like work. You move, you move, you move. You have to look for the weather and everything. Uh, yeah, I. But, yeah. but which else places? I mean, uh, I can't. I don't think we can name a specific place. But like Greece is also lovely, especially if you do your research yeah. and you know where to go because there's so actually there's still lovely places in Greece that there are not that many charter boats or yeah, any also really Italy and France and if you and go a little bit outside of the Brittany Galicia. yeah I mean that's all lovely but Greece is a little bit easy because there are lots of islands so you yeah. don't necessarily have to go sometimes the distances can be quite uh, yeah. long in other places. if I would have to settle for like a favorite experience or favorite area yeah i think it, it's sweden but then also as an experience i think the, the things we were mostly worried about was crossing the biscay and mm -hmm. sailing to the canaries and both of these were pretty unique yeah that was experience yeah crossing and and taking your time and finding the right weather window and crossing it, it gives yeah it's had the unique experience. We saw a lot of wildlife. Uh, you get very yeah. relaxed and detached. You know, you don't have to stress about many things because nothing is really in your hand. Can we end on that. Yeah, it, I don't know what you what you're in saying. So like I don't if think you we can end on that. What do you mean? Nothing is in our hand. No, nothing when you cr when you cross, you know, you you have to cross. That's it. Like you cannot really turn back or. No, it's true. And that it it. 
you you don't have to. And think. the crossings. Nobody will. In drop. the Atlantic is definitely much less painful than the ones we had in the Med. Although they were also nice, not too bad. Most of them. It's more the coastal sailing from place to place that sometimes gets really boring. You know, you you have the options to stop, or you have, and it is just you have the option of turning on the engine and be like, there's no wind. But if you're in the middle of the ocean, you just relax more. Yeah, and we don't have Starlink, so we don't no have social media for us. No. It's very healthy for news, us. Yeah. We read books. <laughs> Leave it at that. Yeah, 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 we can leave it at that. Oh, it's so long. Oh my god, no. I have to edit it. Sorry. Sorry, this is probably gonna end up being really long. But yeah. we're gonna put chapters so you can just skip. Hopefully, you've just been scrolling mm -hmm. to the points that's interesting. And I if you have any questions, uh, more ideas, yeah, to what we should do, what we should see, where we can work, how we can earn more money. Uh, <coughs> If you want to visit, are we answering questions or are we turning them into like some sort of yeah, therapy session or yeah. whatever? Yeah, if Let's cry for help over here. If anyone wants to visit us in the Canaries, you just invited all of your troop to come visit us on the Canaries. No, obviously we will filter them through. <laughs> Th anyway, thanks for the questions. Thank thanks you. for supporting us in whichever way. Uh, yeah, share our videos. You can become a patron. Uh, that will make us more, make us do more videos and stay for longer. And now you will say, "Who's begging again?" Yeah, I'm begging. Yeah. Do you want? We are beggars. Beggars, beggars can choosers. be choosers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And Kai, Kai, you want to say goodbye? Hopefully, next video we'll come back with some yeah, yeah, Come, adventures. come here. No. Kai, Kai. Come here. Look. Yeah. Oh, there. Come here. Look in the camera. Say hi. Bye. Say hi, hi to everybody. Say hi. Hi. Bye. Yeah.